Alright, so on this part, we're now moving into not just functions anymore, but graphs. And these graphs can show up at any time. They can show up on the final exam. They know they do show up on the final exam. So with all this, we have to find the domain and range of these functions and of these graphs. And so we're moving it more in depth. We're digging deeper, dig deeper again. And so here, we're going to take a look at this graph. And we're going to say, okay, as a, as a reminder, f of x equals y is the function. So f of x equals the same thing as y. y, same thing as f of x. They're the same thing. All right, so with this, let's just say this function is what we're dealing with. Let me go and move myself out of the way here. I can't move myself out of the way. Oh, no. All right, let's see if I can squeeze myself a little bit more. All right, so right there. So as you can see, this is the function. I just want you to draw it out. I want you to do the whole thing that's up here. Um, just draw it out completely so you can be able to see what's going on. So as best as possible, we're going to draw it out and everything. And if you need to stop the video, you can stop the video. So I'm ready to go on to the next part. All right, so with it, whenever we talk about our domain, we said that was our input or our x values. So when we look at our domain, we're going from left to right here. Left to right, left to right, left to right, left to right. So our x values are always going to go from left to right. From left to right, left to right. Every single time. So we're going to see where it starts and where it stops. From left to right. All right and then comes to our range. We're going to go from bottom to top. And our range are our y values. So this goes back to our whole definition of domain, our definition of range. Again, domain is your x values, range is your y values. And so here, just think of it like a dance or something. So domain is going to go from the left, from the left, from the left, to the right, to the right. So kind of like you're doing like the um, cha-cha slide or something. So you go from the left, from the left, to the right, to the right. Uh, let's see. Can y'all see me on this one? I don't think y'all can. Let's make sure you can see me on this. All right. So let's do this part right here. So you can do this in your desk if you want to or not. But we're going to go from the left to the right. And so I think it might, hopefully it flips correctly on this one. But we're going from the left, from the left, from the left, from the left, to the right, to the right, to the right. One more time. Uh, from the left to the left, from the right. Sorry, I'm saying that wrong. From the left to the left, to the right, to the right, from the left, from the left, to the right, to the right. So domain goes from the left to the right. Okay, from the left to the right, see where the graph is actually. And in your range, there's a whole thing of drop it like it's hot, then come back up. So you start from the bottom and then go up to the highest point. So from the lowest point down here, and then bring it up to the highest point up here, wherever that is. So domain is going from, from the left to the right, from the left to the right, from the left to the right. And then range is going from dropping like it's hot, going up. Dropping like it's hot, going up. So just think about that. That makes, should make it a little bit easier for you to remember. Hopefully. I hope. All right, so... With that being said, we're going to come here. And what I want you to do is go ahead and draw this out here. You have some graph paper here. Go ahead and draw it out. And again, you can stop this if you want to. And that we can go ahead and put the, um, you can go ahead and um, draw it out and all that good stuff. And then you can pick right back up after this so we can go ahead and draw everything out and work everything. So again, go ahead and do this part. And then we'll go ahead and move on. So hit pause if you need to. Hit pause and stop it. It'll be okay. All right, so for those that didn't hit pause or those that have hit pause after you've already written down all of this stuff, we're going to go ahead and we're going to this bottom part. We just talked about a few seconds ago domain and range and all of this stuff. I hope you guys can see that. So again, domain 
is when when you're finding when finding the domain of a graph, you are going from the left to the right to see where the graph exists. So again, from the left to the left to the right to the right. From the left from the left to the right to the right. Again, from the left from the left to the right to the right. From the left from the left to the right to the right. Alright, so when it comes to our domain for this one, we go from the left side of the graph, all over here, wherever it starts, we find out where the graph starts and where it stops. So if it starts over here, we need to go ahead and find where it starts. And then we go all the way to, from the left, go all the way to the right to see where it stops. So from the left side to the right side. I really hope I hope the video flips for you guys so you can see it correctly. All right, so if we look at it from the left to the right, let me pull up some more. You see the whole thing. If we go from left to right, if you're looking at these parts here, these lines here going from left to right to see where it started and where it stopped, hopefully everybody saw that the graph started right here. That's the furthest left it goes. It doesn't go, does not go past that part. So if we look at it, that's... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or like we saw in the whole pair, that is negative eight. Negative eight. So when we talk about our domain going from left to right, we see that it starts at negative eight. It starts at negative eight. And then we need to figure out where it ends. So it starts here and it goes all the way down and it comes back. Uh, and it goes up to like eight, I think, or something up here, and it comes back down, and it's, it gets to an arrow. But we got to remember, what does an arrow really mean when it comes to graph? Does it mean it stops there? Or does it mean it continues on? And hopefully, you remember from your other math classes that you've had that this arrow means that it goes on, it continues on forever and ever and ever. Sorry, that's bad. But it goes on forever and ever and ever, diagonally. So not just straight down, but diagonally. So that means if you ever have an arrow, that always means that you're going to have infinity. So if we're going from left to right here, and hopefully you did add your infinities onto the graph too. If you go from your left to the right, if this arrow goes on forever and ever and ever, doesn't stop, it means it's going to go on for infinity. It doesn't stop. It's going on forever. So it starts at negative 8 here, this part, and it's an arrow, so it means it's going to go on forever. So where it stops is comma infinity. So it started here at negative 8. It stops here at positive infinity. Now, the only other thing is going back to, hopefully you remember from your, um, from other math classes, we integral notation part, and we talk about integral notation. This is an open circle. Remember, again, open circles were the same thing as doing less than and greater than signs. And so, with that, we said that instead of us doing open circle, we use our parentheses. So, that means here, since at negative 8, 0, that's an open circle, that means that we're going to have to use a parenthesis for that. So here, we're going to put a parenthesis in here for negative 8. And infinity, we always use what? Parenthesis. So here, for our infinity on the side, we're going to put parenthesis there. So it's pretty easy, simple, not hard. Not hard, we can do that. Again, from for domain, is from the left to the right. From the left to the right. The whole time, left to right, where it starts and where it stops. And let me just draw this, write this on here too. So it start, started here at negative 8, and it stopped at infinity. Right, so that's domain. Starts and stops from left to right. And then our range was, drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. So when it comes to our range here, then finding our range, this one's going from the bottom to the top. So drop it low, 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 
and we're going to go all the way up till we get to the highest point. So drop it like it's hot, go down low, drop it like it's hot, go down low, and then we go up to the highest point. So here we find where is the lowest point on this graph. Now, most of you guys will be like, oh, yeah, that's at neg zero, negative eight. That's the lowest one that's on this graph. Then it's going to be lower, blah, blah, blah. That's it. I'm right. But don't forget, whenever you have an arrow, you got to figure out what direction that arrow is going. So if you look at this arrow here, even though it st kind of stops right there because there's no more room there, this arrow actually goes down for infinity, forever. It doesn't stop. It goes down forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. So in this case, yeah, zero negative eight is low down there. It's a low point. But wherever that arrow stops is where it's going to actually be, the lowest point. And again, that arrow is going down completely. So this arrow right here, sorry, this arrow right here is going down forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Not just, just going diagonal. It's going down also. So it's going down forever and ever and ever. And again, whenever you have an arrow, that means it's an infinity. So if it's going down forever and ever and ever, right? so if it's going down forever and ever and ever and ever, that means it's going down to negative infinity. So that means if we're going to go from lowest to the highest, that means that our lowest point on this graph is negative infinity. Because the arrow goes down forever. It goes past the zero and negative eight. Forever. It's going to go down forever. It's going to go past it. All right, so then we go up to find the highest point on this graph. So here, negative eight was the lowest. Oh, sorry, infinity, negative infinity was the lowest. And then we go up and up and up and up and up and up until we get the highest point on the graph. So that's that point right there. And again, since we're going from the bottom to the top, we're looking at that point right there, that line that's the highest part it goes. So what value is that? What number is that on the y-axis? If you look at that, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So the lowest part is negative infinity. The highest point, the highest point is 8, positive 8. And again, oh, sorry, that's wrong. That's wrong. Again, here, we know infinity has a parenthesis. No matter what type of infinity it is, it has a parenthesis. If you look at this part up here, though, for this 8, that's a closed circle. We said that's normally for our lesson or equal to or greater than or equal to the sign. And that means we use a bracket. So when it comes to our interval notation for this one, because it's a closed circle, this is not a hole in it at all. And you can tell if there's a hole, it was, it, you can, you'll be able to see it. So here would be a bracket on 8 because it's a closed circle. Closed. Not open, but closed. All right, so again, this is our lowest point. It's negative infinity. And our highest point is 8. And again, don't forget, domain we look at just the x values. And range we look at the y values. And remember also, this these are not ordered pairs. These are not ordered pairs here. This is interval notation. Interval notation doesn't have an x and a y. Interval notation either deals with x's, both of them are x's, or both of them are y's, but it does not deal with x and y. It's not order pairs. It's interval notation. Okay, so that's a look at it, and then we're going to stop here, and I'm going to go ahead and give you an example next.